Welcome to our video series, Answering Tough Questions. Again, Pastor Tim here at uh, Calvary Chapel in Furnace Falls. Today's question is about uh, how can God allow pain and suffering to exist in this world? Now, there are many different uh, worldviews that try and answer this question, essentially believing that man is essentially good and that the result of a fallen world is because God does not intervene. Now, from a biblical perspective, we get a much crisp and clearer understanding of the world that we live in. When you read God's Word, the Holy Bible, you find out very quickly in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, God created everything good. And the days of creation there, the six days of creation, he says it was very good. Now, what went wrong? Well, it doesn't take you very far into God's word to find out what happened. And there in Genesis chapter 3, we discover uh, sin. We see that Adam and Eve rebelled against God and brought sin into the world. We see that the ground and all that is on the planet is cursed because of this sin. And God begins to tell mankind there in the garden that they could no longer be there and that they would, uh, the Hebrew word is die, die. They would not be able to live forever. Uh, and so we see that the separation between us and God comes into play. But we also see the world begins to fall apart. Now, it doesn't take long for us to be born into this world to discover uh, the world is indeed falling apart. When we're young children, we can be a little naive and innocent and not fully understanding the reality of death and pain and suffering this world has. And the older we get, it can either make us uh, bitter or it can make us better. It can make us bitter towards God and bitter towards people or it can make us better. It can draw us closer to God and closer to people. There are three people that come to my mind from the scriptures that had to deal with this very subject. One of them was Joseph in the Old Testament. He was uh, one of the sons of his father. There were 12 sons in total. And uh, he was uh, betrayed by his brothers and sold into slavery in Egypt. He was then falsely accused of a crime he didn't commit and thrown into prison. But we see at the end of his story, he forgave his brothers and reconciled with them. And he told his brothers what, what the enemy meant for evil, God used for good. Another story we can see throughout the scriptures is entitled the book of Job. And it's all about the life of Job and, and dealing how he dealt with suffering. And if you ever want to get really into looking at this subject more, I would recommend reading the book of Job. He was a righteous man who had faith in God, and yet even then he had to deal with loss of his family, loss of his goods, loss of his health, uh, loss of his relationships, until all he had left was his relationship with God. And we see that Throughout his story, God is what got him through that season of pain and suffering, that season of loss and grief. And in the end, he realized that God was really all he needed. And God restored to him health and prosperity. But more than that, God restored to him family and friends. And God restored to him joy and peace. Another story you may not readily come to your mind is the story of Christ. Yes, Jesus did come to this earth to save us, but he also came to suffer and die on the cross for us. And the beating that he endured, being flogged with the cat of nine tails and, and then dying on the cross and the nails going through his hands and his feet, he did that for us. And through that horrific scene, that evil and suffering, God used it for good. He brought through that 
his burial and resurrection, forgiveness for our sins, an everlasting relationship with him. So in times where we deal with pain and suffering, and we all have a story, and there are plenty of stories I can share more of how to deal with grief and death, disappointment, betrayal. But when I look at what Christ went through for us, I look at what Job went through, what Joseph went through, and many others we can find in the scriptures. It brings me a sense of peace and comfort and knowing that God is in control of my story and that perhaps the things that I've had to endure, I can then use the comfort I've received to comfort others. I can then become better and not bitter. I can draw closer to God and and I can also draw closer to others and encourage them and help them and be a friend to them. So we know one day though, sin and suffering and the result of all that in this fallen world will be gone away with forever. And friends, that truly is good news. That there will be a heaven waiting for us forever. Perfection. It'll be like the Garden of Eden, uh, except it'll be fully restored and without sin and suffering and evil allowed. So that's something that we can look forward to. We'll talk more about um, Christianity and the reasons for it in our next video. But again, I want to leave you with a few resources. C.S. Lewis has a book on the, uh, the suffering of pain and, and how really to deal with pain. Uh, there's another great ministry uh, called Got Questions has some great resources on dealing with suffering and, and evil in the world and answering those difficult questions. Um, again, they're not an easy topic to, to, to walk through, and yet it's something we all have to wrestle with, something that we all have to uh, deal with in our lives. Again, I have found no more comfort uh, than any, I think anyone else than through God's Word. And so if you are a stranger to God's word, I would encourage you uh, to begin to read his word and discover uh, God's plan for your life. And that there is hope and joy, and comfort and peace in knowing God. Oftentimes at a funeral, we'll take a look at Psalm 23, one that I think many know that as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that God is with us. And there's a peace about that, knowing that God is with us. And so I hope you know God. I hope you have a relationship with Him.